This program brought to you in part by the Erica Lewis Endowment Fund. Peace family, I am Lady AK and welcome to the 2022 African American History Challenge Championship where the best and brightest high school students match wits in this unique academic competition that tests their knowledge of black contributions to the world. This year's championship features Arbor View <laughs> versus Centennial. We would like to thank our sponsors, the Clark County School District, the Las Vegas Clark County Library District, the African American History Challenge Committee, the Clark County Black Caucus, Infinity Diversity Matters, Vegas PBS, and the Black Student Union Network. Let's start the 2022 African American History Challenge. <laughs> All right, let's begin the challenge. The first category is arts and entertainment. In 1984, Vanessa Williams became the first African-American woman to win this crown. From Centennial, Jordan. Miss America. That is correct. Next question. In 1969, President Richard Nixon awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom to what pioneering jazz musician? Centennial Akaya. Louis Armstrong. That is incorrect. Do you all have a guess over at Arborview? Pioneering jazz musician. The correct answer is Duke Ellington. Next question. Dana Owens is the real name of what pioneering female rap star? From Arborview Chastity. Queen Latifah. That's correct. This legendary blues man was the first person to combine blues and amplify guitar to create urban blues. Arborview Chastity. Muddy Waters. That's correct. Developed by African-American Greek letter organizations on college campuses, this complex dance performance became one of the rituals of group identity. Arborview, Chastity. Stepping. Step. Stepping. Say it again. Stepping. That's correct. Creating the comic strip Scoop and Dark Laughter in the 1930s, this cartoonist became popular as a social satirist. Centennial Jordan. Eugene O'Neill. That is incorrect. Arborview for the steal. Ah, the correct answer is Oliver Harrington. Next question. Inspired by Diego Rivera, artists Charles Alston, John T. Biggers, Jacob Lawrence, and Charles W. White used this type of medium to document African architectural traditions during the Harlem Renaissance. Centennial Jordan. Murals. That's correct. The Oscar-winning Best Picture, 12 Years a Slave, depicted the struggles of this New York State born-free African-American man who was kidnapped in Washington, D.C. by two conmen in 1841 and sold into slavery. Centennial Jordan. Solomon Northrop. That is correct. Described as the first modern American Negro to establish himself as a serious actor of first quality, Charles Sidney Gilpin became the first black to star in a major American play, The Emperor Jones, by this famous playwright. Jordan from Centennial. Eugene O'Neill. That is correct. This rapper was born O'Shea Jackson and has moved on from his days in NWA to star in movies such as Barbershop. And we, are we there yet? What is his stage name? Ice Cube. Arborview, Chastity. Ice Cube. Say it again. Ice Cube. Yes, that's correct. Created by African-American youths in the early 70s, this athletic style of street dancing, usually set to drums, breaks in hip hop, funk, and soul music, gained immense popularity in the 1980s. 
Centennial Jordan. Breaking or breakdancing? That is correct. And that concludes our arts and entertainment category. You all should feel so proud of yourselves. We'll be right back with our score. <laughs> Welcome back to the African American History Challenge Championship. And I have your scores. We have Arborview with 20 points. Good for you, you all. And we have Centennial with 25 points. As you all can see, this is a really, really close game. So let's make sure you bring the pain. Oh, that rhymes. This Marxist feminist blank was a fiery and purposely provocative activist who burst upon the national stage in the late 1960s. Her concerns helped broaden the movement's focus. And because Charity chimed in too fast, Centennial has the opportunity to answer that question. Sadie. Angela Davis. That is correct. Blank was a baseball player with the Atlanta Braves who broke Babe Ruth's record of 714 home runs. What is his real first name? Henry Hank and um, Henry Hank Aaron. That is correct. The Missouri Compromise was enacted in what year and regulated the extension of slavery in the country for three decades until its repeal? from Centennial Sadie. 1820. That is correct. One of the first blacks to go to work for NASA was Katherine G. Johnson. What was the movie that portrayed her? Charity from Arborview. Hidden Figures. Say it again. Hidden Figures. That is correct. The Green Book by Victor H. Green was recognized as the official Negro travel guide by the United States. It was conceived in 1932 and first published in what year? from Arborview Charity. 1836. That's incorrect. Mm. Centennial, would you like a chance at it? Sadie? 1936. That is correct. Almost Charity, oh man. The first black man to serve successfully in the Nevada Assembly was Las Vegas and political activist who? From Centennial Sadie. Woodrow Wilson. That is correct. The anti-slavery faction, comprised mostly of blank, helped fugitive slaves reach safety. Charity from Arborview. The, the Northerners? Speak up for no, me, please. Northerners? Yes, that is correct. The first African-American governor of Massachusetts was... Sadie from Centennial. Deval Patrick, Governor Deval Patrick. That is correct. And that concludes that category. Please stay tuned for our scores. <laughs> Welcome back and thank you for tuning in to the African American History Challenge Championship. I'm so excited to reveal our latest scores to you. We have 35 points for Arborview. And in the lead with 50 points, we have Centennial. It's still anyone's game, so don't get discouraged, you all. We are going into the civil rights category. First question. What year was the 15th Amendment ratified in the USA that prohibited states from denying a male citizen the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude? Arborview, my love. 1870. That is correct. As a result of the civil rights movement of the 1960s, what two most comprehensive civil rights bills passed in Congress and became law in 1964 and 1965, respectively? Centennial, Akaya. The 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Good for you, that is correct. 
The Voting Rights Act signed into law by U.S. President Blank aimed to overcome legal barriers at the state and local levels that prevented African Americans from exercising their right to vote. <laughs> Centennial, Akaya. President Lyndon B. Johnson. That is correct. An event that outraged many Americans occurred on March 7th, 1965, when peaceful participants in a march for voting rights were met by Alabama state troopers who attacked them after they refused to turn back. In what cities did the march begin and end? <laughs> Centennial, Akaya. Summon to Montgomery. That is correct. This civil rights movement centered in Mississippi in the summer of 1963 with the goal to establish freedom schools and community centers throughout the state to increase black voter registration and challenge the all-white delegation at the Democratic National Convention. What is the movement known as? Akaya Centennial. Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. That is incorrect. Mm. Arbor View for the Steel. No? No one? Okay. The actual answer is Freedom Summer. Ah, almost had it. A chance at redemption with our next question. She was the only woman to serve on most of the major civil rights projects of the 1960s, and although she was not featured as a speaker during the March on Washington in 1963, she was one of the event's chief organizers and represented the only women's organization recognized in the march as president of the National Council of Negro Women. <laughs> Centennial Akaya. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. That is incorrect. Arbor View for the Steel. No, no, it's okay to say no. It's all right to say no. We have room for more questions if you say no. The answer is Dorothy Height. The Freedom Rise was founded in 1942 on Mahatma Gandhi's principle of <laughs> Centennial Akaya. Nonviolent protest. That is correct, and that also concludes this category. Good job, you all. I look forward to seeing you in the next round as we reveal the latest scores. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there with us and welcome back to the African American History Challenge Championship. Let's get right into the latest scores. We have Arborview with 40. And Centennial continues to reign supreme with 70. All right, Arborview, are you ready for a chance at redemption? Yes. All right, well this is your chance with the category of the African Diaspora. The people of Africa were enslaved and shipped across the ocean to the Americas. What was this called? Arborview Chastity. That is correct. Because Africans were seen as a workforce, what is the significant cause of the African diaspora? Arborview Chastity. Economics. That is correct. Like their African ancestors, African Americans pass on much of their knowledge through Chastity, Arborview. Folklore, proverbs, music, and religion? Absolutely correct. Good job, Chastity. Next question. What time frame marks the enslavement and shipment of the descendants of West Africa? Centennial, Natasha. 16th and 19th centuries. That is correct. The Hippocratic Oath includes the oath to which Egyptian ruler? The correct answer is Imhotep, you thought. The next question, he carried Jesus' cross as he was led to crucifixion. What was his name and where was he from? Arborview Chastity. Hey Zeus, um, where was he from? Yes, where was he from? I'm going to say that you're out of time to answer it. The answer is Simon of Serene. 
The next question, what was the name of the inventor whose inventions were so popular and well-made when other inventors attempted to steal his idea and sell their own versions of the device? Companies were not fooled. They insisted on the authentic device, calling it the real McCoy. Arborview, Chastity. Elijah McCoy. That is correct. <laughs> and Natasha must have had it in her head. <laughs> Marcus Garvey, the best known advocate of the Back to Africa movement, was born in Jamaica, West Indies. What was his middle name? I cannot. His name was most his middle name is Mosiah. The great-grandson of African slave Abram Hannibal was a high-ranking military engineer. He is known today as the father of Russian literature. Who is he? <phone rings> Chastity of Arborview. Barack Obama. That is incorrect, my love. The correct answer is Alexander Pushkin. And that concludes that category. Please, please, please stay right there with us as we come back and reveal the latest score. Welcome back to the African American History Challenge Championship. And we are ready for our next round. I am so excited to reveal these scores to you because now it's getting tight. We have Arborview with 60. <laughs> Chastity came through in clutch. And Centennial, you got a whopping 75. Some pretty proud numbers, but let's hope they don't stay the same as we come out of the Kings and Queens category. Who was the founder of South Africa's Zulu Empire? Arborview, Chastity. My bad. Shaka Zulu. That is correct. This African queen of Angola was an astute diplomat and visionary military leader who fought against the Portuguese and their expanding slave trade in Central Africa for over 30 years. What is her name? Not Charity. Centennial. Nothing at all? No problem. It's Anna and Zinga. And you knew that. It's all right. Let's move forward to the next question. Who built the pyramids at Giza, which is now one of the seven wonders of the world? Um, Chastity, Charity from Arborview. Zinga. Uh, it's um, pyramids. Oh. Don't matter how hard you tap. King Khufu. Ah. Next question. What is the oldest kingdom of the Nile? Centennial Zaniah. Ancient Ghana? That is incorrect. Arborview, do you have a guess? Charity. Egypt. That is correct. The country called the Gold Coast by the Europeans took this name when it gained independence in 1957. However, it was not part of the ancient kingdom of the same name. What is this country? Arborview, Ghana. Charity. Oh, Ghana. That is correct. <laughs> Charity wants lunch too. This king gave out so much gold on a pilgrimage to Cairo that upon his return, it was no longer rare and precious and had dropped in value 25%. Who was he? Centennial, Zania. Mansa Musa. That is correct. Each area of Africa has characteristics that shaped its culture. In West Africa, the focus was Centennial, Zania. Trading. That is correct. How many countries are there in Africa today? Arborview Charity. 54. That is correct. This great Zimbabwe culture of 1,000 to 1,450 left a large, impressive city made of what material? Centennial, Zania. Stone. That is correct. Nubia was a flourishing kingdom how many years ago? Centennial, Zania. 5,000. That is correct, and thank you for that answer as it takes us out of this round. We'll be right back with the score. Yeah. 
We're so glad to have you back and you'll be glad you stayed, especially when I reveal these scores. Oh my goodness, what a close game. We have Arborview with 80 points. And we have Centennial clawing at the top with 95. But none of that matters if you don't perform in the Great Migration category. The Great Migration was the movement of African Americans from the South to nearly every other corner of America. How long did the greatest portion of this movement last? Centennial, Lyra. 1910 to 1916. Do y'all accept that answer? Judges? Two judges say yes. They'll accept that the answer that's actually there is six years, but you did the extra work and actually gave the years. <laughs> It is estimated that during the Great Migration, blank million black Southerners left the South and fanned out across America. Centennial, Natasha. Six million? That is correct. <laughs> the Great Migration started in what period? Lyra, 1910 Centennial. to 1916. Oh. That's all right, Lyra, Centennial. 1910 to 1916. That is correct, again. The main reasons for African Americans leaving the South were unfair legal systems, oppressive political systems, inequality of education, and Centennial Lyra. Lynching. That is correct. Most Southern African Americans moved to Centennial Lyra. Northern and Western cities. That is absolutely correct. What phenomenon prompted the first time since emancipation that black labor was in demand outside of the agricultural South? What phenomenon prompted the first time since emancipation that black labor was in demand outside of the agricultural South? Lyra Centennial. World War I. That is correct. At the beginning of the Great Migration, only 10% of African Americans lived outside of the South. At the end of the Great Migration in 1970s, what percentage were living outside of the South? Lyra from Centennial. 47. That is correct. Writer Isabel Wilkerson describes the Great Migration as the first mass act of blank by a people that were in bondage in the country far longer than they had been free. Arborview? I will try. Writer Isabel Wilkerson describes the Great Migration as the first mass act of blank by a people that were in bondage in the country far longer than they had been free. The answer is independence. Mm. The mass migration affected U.S. cities in ways that would change them to this day. For example, Chicago's African-American population before the Great Migration was under 3%. By the turn of the 21st century, black Americans made up blank of Chicago's population. Lyra from Centennial. 33%. That is correct. What major art form did migrants bring from the South which influenced urban language, music, and culture? What major art form did migrants bring from the South which influenced urban language, music, and culture? The blues, baby, which is exactly what you're going to have if you leave before we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the African American History Challenge 2022 Championship Finals. Oh man, what a game. I hope that you all learned something, we learned something, but there must be a winner. We wanna say Arborview congratulations with 80 points. But we want to say congratulations to Centennial with 135 yeah. points, which makes you all the winners. You have your traveling trophy and your money. They want that trophy. And thank you for tuning in to the 2022 African American History Challenge Championship. We hope to see you next year as we return right here on Vegas PBS. Woo!